All right, we're recording. So let's get started here. As I mentioned, I'm Mike Ferrante with Century 21 Homestar on the 21 Mike team. Uh, we're a team of agents. We cover all of Northeast Ohio. Uh, we're just under 30 agents right now. We do just over 300 deals per year. Uh, been in the business. I've been in about 12 years now. Um, today's topic is all about marketing. So I mentioned in the <clears throat> marketing materials that I did my uh, MBA with a concentration in marketing from Case Western Reserve University here in Cleveland. Seems like many years ago, but I've taken a lot of those lessons and applied them to real estate. So those are my qualifications. Uh, the teaser for today is we're going to talk about the how of how we get business. So we already know who we get business from and you know the how of how we get business is all about the marketing. So that's what we're going to cover today. Uh, briefly, let me sum up. We Tony and I do these sessions. He's going to try to join us if he can today. He had another meeting, so he's going to try to join us if he gets done with that. But Tony and I do these every Tuesday, 11.30 to noon, with the exception of the 29th. We are taking one Tuesday off, and then we're going to roll right into next year. We've got a couple great guests, actually, people going to be on our show to talk about uh, specific things in the real estate business. So uh, let's get right into this. If you want to catch up, um, you can go to our YouTube channel as well. Just look up Mike Ferrante, Cleveland Realtor, or you can hit me up at Mike at 21mike.com if you want any information about past classes or you have questions on this one. So again, today's focus is marketing. Uh, this is how to grow your business using marketing channels. Two weeks ago, we covered goal setting. So we wanna make sure that, of course, we start with a goal. How many transactions are you gonna do? How much money are you gonna make? And we did a great video and I've got a great tool, a spreadsheet that I'll share with, with you if you wanna hit me up at mike at 21mike.com. Uh, but it helps you kind of understand if you want to hit a certain number of transactions or a dollar amount and you know what your average commission is, you can boil things down to how many transactions you have to do. And then, of course, uh, how many people you have to be in touch with in order to hit that number of transactions. I mean, really, that's the bottom line is how many people can we interact with? so that we can create transactions, help people transact real estate. So essentially we're out there helping people and that's how we earn our living. So one week ago, we identified the who of the marketing. Who is our target? Who are we gonna talk to in order to get business? It's gonna be leads. Is it gonna be your sphere of influence? That's all the who. Today is the how, the methods that we use to reach out to those people and get them to do business with us or to refer business to us. Now, keep in mind, this is a very high level view and I'm gonna pull up a PowerPoint here so that if anyone wants notes or if they want these notes later, again, just hit me up at mike at 21mike.com. This is gonna be very high level general what we do, different methods of marketing. As the year progresses, we'll get more into detail on each method. Um, but today we're not going to go too much into depth on each message, each, each method. We're going to make a list essentially. And as agents, I want you to look at the list and say, I'm good at that, or I would like to do that. And if you see something you don't like, or you don't think you're good at, you can skip it because good news, there's so many different marketing methods. You have plenty to choose from. All right. So let me get my, my uh, screen shared and pull up my wonderful PowerPoint that I have ready for you today. Okay, so there's our contact info. Oh, the phone is on there too if you want to call us. Uh, that's an office number and uh, you can also hit us up by email or check out our website 21mike.com and I already mentioned the YouTube channel. These are all marketing channels too, by the way, guys. You know, website, YouTube channel, phone is a, is a marketing method. So today we're hitting up marketing channels. This is the how of how we grow our business, okay? And we're talking goal setting for 2021. So I always like to lead with this. What do we do as, as agents? You know, and, and when I'm in a room with people where we're actually like looking at each other, I hear all kinds of answers. I hear we negotiate, we, we write offers, we do showings and all these things are true, okay? But what do we do? We, we talk to people, okay? And that's that's the next slide is we talk to people. This is how we conduct our business. We're in such a... We, I would say it's a simple business, but it's not easy, okay? It takes some skill and some, some training and experience to do what we do, but the what of what we do is basically we're talking to people. You know, yes, it may be text, it may be email, 
but we communicate with people and through that communication is how we help people sell or buy houses. Now this slide here talks about your strengths and weaknesses. And this is what I alluded to. You know, if you're really great on the phone, capitalize on that, okay? If you're better in person, then maybe you should focus on marketing channels that are put you in front of people, okay? And I, I'm not gonna allude to those yet. We'll get to the list but really get to know yourself and analyze what your strengths and weaknesses are. Now, I'm not saying don't try to improve on your weaknesses because certainly phone marketing can be very, very effective. And if you're not good at it, practice. You know, there's, there's lots of classes and coaching out there to help you get better at what you're not good at. But initially, as you're making your business plan for 2021, figure out what you're good at that and capitalize on it. So what are your strengths and weaknesses? All right, as I said, this is the how of growing our business. These are all the marketing channels and we're gonna split them up into two different categories. Okay, there's one-to-one, -one, that's me and you talking on the phone, having a meeting, uh, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, okay, texting someone. These are examples and we'll get to those. Or there's one-to-many, okay, a Zoom meeting, like a, a seminar like this is a one-to-many channel. I do a video and put it on YouTube. How many hundreds of people or thousands can view that video. That's one time I did something and it reaches many people. So those are the two categories. And we're gonna get into these right now. All right, one to, one to one marketing channels. These are the phone calls, the voicemails, the emails, texts, I, I bet text is next, it is. SMS, MMS. And uh, actually I, I looked this up a while back because while I've seen these terms, SMS is just text. MMS is the multimedia. Guys, you can send videos to people now. I mean, you, you know that already, but videos, pictures, all that stuff can be sent through, through text. So with one simple tool, you have a bunch of marketing channels available to you. And so you might feel like a little bit of a letdown here, but one really basic marketing channel is you on your phone calling and texting people. Okay, let's keep moving here because I know this is pretty basic. We're going to get to some uh, higher level stuff as we get into this. DMs and PMs, private message, direct message, whatever the platform is. I was just, I had just logged into my LinkedIn account today and I couldn't believe all the messages that were there. And these are people marketing to me, selling me essentially. By the way, guys, realtors, in my opinion, are the most marketed to profession in the world. I mean, you guys, how many uh, solicitations do you get? You know, people wanting you to buy their leads and use their services, virtual assistants. I mean, there's so many different things, title companies, mortgages. I mean, all these guys want our attention because we touch so many people. We're a valuable asset to them. Um, but we also have to think about ourselves and how we reach people. But back to my LinkedIn story, I got in my LinkedIn account today and there were just message after message after message of people wanting to connect with me so that I could help them grow, grow their business. Um, as you can tell, I'm not in LinkedIn very often, so I did not see these messages until just today, as a matter of fact. And, um, you know, I, I don't respond well to that type of marketing. So if you want to reach me, anyone who's listening that might have messaged me, Direct messaging me through LinkedIn is not a good method, but other people, maybe on Facebook, maybe Facebook Messenger is a great way for you to reach people that are a potential source of business for you in 2021. I love me some social media. So one of my favorites on, on this slide, on this uh, group here of one-to-one -one marketing channels is commenting on social media. And I'll give a real basic example. Um, my example is, Someone has a birthday, just wish them a happy birthday. And I get into this in one of my social media classes, but tag them so that you make sure that they see it, okay? But just going on your social media periodically with the thought in mind of I'm doing this for business. Don't get lost in Facebook or Instagram or whatever platform you like for an hour and realize, geez, I just looked at pictures of people's dogs and their you know, food pictures and graduation or whatever and I just lost an hour of my time, approach it with a process in mind that I'm going through my social media feed looking for people that first of all, I haven't talked to in a while, and secondly, opportunities. So there was one I just had recently, um, someone was um, 
looking for a mover or um, someone actually said they were moving back to Cleveland. You know, so these are obvious opportunities where you can say, wow, that's great news. You know, who's helping you with your housing needs? And don't remember, guys, one of the coolest things about our business is the referral. OK, so say I have a friend. I, I'm going to make this up because I don't remember where they were moving from. Oh, it was Nashville. Someone moving from Nashville here to Cleveland. Of course, we say, gosh, is anyone helping you find a house? You know, we're old friends or we knew each other in high school, whatever it may be. But what about the referral opportunity in Nashville? By the way, who's helping you sell your home in Nashville? We as agents know how to find other good agents. That's a great referral opportunity and a source of business that most agents don't take advantage of. Simply by vetting that agent and making a great referral, you can add income to your year in 2021. I referred, I had some clients who moved from Cleveland Heights to DC a couple of years ago. My client inherited two homes from, a aunt, from an aunt in DC and had to sell these two homes. And so I referred a really great agent who's in the same coaching program I am, the Tom Ferry program. This guy was phenomenal. He did a superb job. And guess what? Homes in DC, it's not like here in Ohio where your average sale price is 175. These homes were in the sixes. One was in the 600s, one was over 800,000. So I got these checks in the thousands of dollars for the 25% referral fee that I collected on those. So a uh, little tangent alert there, but uh, referral fees. So it's commenting on social media, staying in touch with people that way. It's a one-to-one -one marketing channel, but it's quick and it's easy. You know, a phone call might be 20 minutes. A social media comment might be a couple minutes. Here are some other great one-to-one -one methods, personal notes and personal meetings. Now, right now, personal meetings might be limited due to all the insanity we have in the world with COVID, but how about a Zoom meeting? How about a FaceTime? You know, how about writing a note? You know, I know that that is kind of a lost art and we're like, well, hey, I got email. Why am I going to write a note? But I'm telling you, a personal note always gets opened. A handwritten envelope always gets opened. I know we throw away our junk mail, but when you get something that's handwritten and it looks like a card, guess what? You're going to open it. Because I think we all flash back to the days when grandma sent us, you know, $5 jammed in a card. So, you know, you never know what's in there. But personal notes are huge, guys. I would really encourage you, like Brian Buffini talks about, have a goal, how many personal notes you're going to write per day, per week, you know, whatever it is. Door knocking. Now, I know you're going to push back and say, Mike, it's COVID. No one wants you knocking on their doors. And a lot of people aren't doing it. I always say what the, the thing that a lot of people aren't doing is a good thing to do right now. So I have done some door knocking lately, and I do it in a very safe way. I'm always wearing my mask. I just, you know, even if I'm standing 10 feet away from you, which I do, I try to, I exceed the six foot. I'm going to stand way back. I'll ring the doorbell, knock on the door, take a couple steps back off the front steps, wave to people with my mask on and just say whatever it is that I'm there doing. We'll get into scripts later in the year. What do you say? But this is, these are the methods. This is the um, uh, how of what we're going to do as far as our marketing. But door knocking, guys, great one-to-one. -one, and if you're better in person, think about it. Pop buys and gifts. Another uh, thing from Buffini, uh, just stopping by with a little something for somebody. Do you bake cookies? Do you have, do you do crafts? Um, you know, just, um, I've heard some really great pop buy ideas like, a, like an ice cream scooper with a little note on it that just says, hey, if you ever need the scoop, on your local real estate market. And these are, these are gifts and, you know, to people that you already know. So maybe you have uh, your 50 best clients from last year and you do this little funny gift like the ice cream scooper or whatever you come up with and you're gonna pop by each one of them over the course of maybe two, two days. And you're just there for a quick visit. That's why it's a pop by. All right, now I'm gonna switch over to some one-to-many marketing channels. These are the ones that I like. As much as I like some personal interaction, the one-to-many marketing channels can be so much more effective, reach a wider audience, but they're less personal. So there's trade-offs. Reverse pop buys, what the heck is that? So we have done, years past, we've done pie day where we do holiday pies. We sit at the office, we invite people, they place their pie orders and they come to our office. Instead of me popping by to see them, they pop by to see us and we give them something. And it's a reminder that once a year reminder of who we are and why we appreciate them, whatever it might be, but many people coming to you. Uh, again, we may be limited on this right now, but it's a brilliant idea. By the way, we canceled our pie day this year. Just didn't think it was a good idea. Events and parties. 
Now I know we're focusing on, um, uh, you know, I want to focus a lot on the free stuff and sometimes parties and events can be expensive, but you could also be an attendee at the party. And how about something as simple as wearing your company shirt or your hat to the party, you know, bring business cards. I mean, you don't want to be that guy or gal at the party who's like, hey, need any real estate? Need any? Don't be that person. But at the same time, come prepared to market yourself. Okay, not sell, but market. Clubs and boards. Uh, one of my teammates, Laura, she is uh, very active in her school, PTA, parent, you know, whatever they call it these days. She gets a lot of business just by being there, being present. And people know that she's a reliable member of the club or board. And so they know, they, they assume that she's good and reliable at her real estate job. So think about your clubs and boards and uh, chamber of commerce, you know, all that stuff. This is one to many marketing channels where you're meeting a lot of people, talking to a lot of people. Seminars, something like this. Um, I just had a, I was thinking about, oh, I saw a, lay, a gal, a local agent doing a first time home buyer seminar on Facebook. Brilliant, I thought, you know, people are going to sign up and she's going to have the opportunity to teach them things that they need to know. Because think about it, guys, even if you're a new agent, you know 10 times more than the average first time home buyer because they've never bought a house. You know, even if you've done three transactions, that's three times more transactions than they have. You could teach a first time home buyer seminar. And if you're not confident enough, bring someone else in to help you, either a more experienced agent or how about that lender that's been in the business 20 years, title company. They could be a source of really great information on your seminar, even if you're new. So that's a great point for me to say, there's no excuses. You know, even if you say, but Mike, I'm a new agent, I can't do that. Not true. There's always a way to do virtually any of these marketing channels. Open houses. This is a huge one, guys. I know right now open houses may be limited, but we're doing what we call safety first open houses where we're wearing masks, requiring the attendees to wear a mask, limiting the number of people who come in, requiring sign in, not handing them a pen, by the way, which I'm going to tell you something. I know some of you are going to say, yeah, but Mike, I do open houses and I can never get anybody to sign in. I'm going to do a whole class on open houses, but guess what? This has enabled me to get 100% sign-in rates at the open houses I've done or, or helped my teammates with. I stand at the door and I say, great, let me sign you in. How'd you hear about our open? Name, address, name, email address, phone number. If people say, no, I'd rather not sign in, I'm, st I'm standing there at the door. They are going to give me a name and phone number and, a, and hopefully an email address. It may be fake, but they're not going to get by me. I'm going to insist in a very nice way. One of the things I've been saying is, look, I've promised the sellers I would make sure I got everyone's contact info, you know, partially for just peace of mind, but also due to COVID. You know, if someone does come down with COVID, they like to do that trace. So I don't want to scare people. But at the same time, guys, I'm getting sign-ins at my opens, and these are a great source of business where people are coming to you, and it's more than just one-on-one. -on -one. Networking groups. I mentioned Chamber of Commerce already, but that's essentially what a chamber is, or Business Networking International. My meeting was this morning. I've been in this group for going on 10 years now. This year to date, I've generated $45,000 in commissions from my BNI networking group. Now, right now we're meeting virtually, which is a great time, in my opinion, to get into a BNI group if people are dropping out and if they're meeting virtually. So easy to attend these meetings. Normally they're in person, but networking groups, look into them. All right, so now I want to kind of circle back to the one to many marketing channels that are free. Okay, these are the ones that people love to hear about. Um, anything you do on your computer, oftentimes that's free. So posts and uploads and stories, you know, uploading a video, for example. Uh, today, I'm finishing up uh, a market update video, okay? So I do, I compile data in all of Northeast Ohio, and I boil it down to a 90-second market update video, and I strive to do this monthly. I'll admit to you, I've missed a couple this year, but I'm going to do these monthly, and I'm going to distribute those through various channels. They go out on Twitter. They go out on my Facebook page, YouTube channel, and I direct email them. So um, the production of these videos, it doesn't have to be anything extremely fancy. Again, with an iPhone and the iMovie app, you can create really nice looking videos. They don't have to be like Hollywood movie presentations. Now I do have a VA that I use 
and it cost me about 40 bucks to produce a video in a more professional manner. Um, there's places like Fiverr, there's a website, F-I-V-E-R-R, -R, where people will, you know, you can hire someone to do virtually these tasks for you. So posts, uploads, stories, posting your Instagram stories. And by the way, guys, it doesn't always have to be real estate related. You know, there's a guy in California that I follow every day at the same time. He says, hey, I'm at the gym. This is how I'm starting my day. Pretty cool that people now come to rely on him and they're like, um, hey, Patrick, you know, we're didn't see you at the gym today, you know, if, if he doesn't do it. So really cool stuff that he posts. That's a lot about him. And then he mixes in some real estate. Your profiles. Pro, I get into this a little later here, but updating your profiles everywhere you can. Be found. Don't be a secret agent, as they say. Your pages, your Facebook page, Instagram page, YouTube channel. Get involved in groups on social, okay? Um, we've got a great group that we created about seven years ago called Cleveland, Ohio Real Estate Homes for Sale slash Rent. I know it's wordy, but I wanted to get all the keywords in so that when people got on Facebook and started searching for groups, now we have 4,600 members in this Facebook group. And guess what? Every new member gets greeted by us, okay? Now you could join groups like that or create groups like that where a lot of people join and talk about a, a specific topic. You know, you don't have to do a big group. It could be a small group. What if you did, um, let me think, uh, Gates Mills um, uh, or, or Geauga County horse property owners, if that's what you specialize in, or Lakefront Living, Ashtabula County Lakefront Living Facebook group. You might only have 20, 30, 50 members of that group, but imagine how targeted that is, you know, and, and you now become the expert on Ashtabula County Lakefront Living. Very cool stuff here, guys. Groups and Facebook is just one example of groups. Channels, um, you know, your your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, Snapchat, TikTok. I know you're looking at me like, Mike, you're nuts. TikTok as a marketing channel for real estate. I know a guy, um, Zachary Faust. Uh, he's in he's he's East Coast, I believe. He's um, Boston area, and he has over a million TikTok followers. He told me he has created 30 referrals this year, people saying, hey, real estate, I'm in Houston though. No problem, I'll find you a Houston agent. He's created over 30 referrals outside his market and he's closed, I think he said 10 deals in his market this year because people know him, he's TikTok famous. So I'm not saying jump right on TikTok, but don't doubt these sources, guys. Pick one or two of them, one that you're already on perhaps and maximize it. And I already mentioned events. So like these right now, these virtual events can be huge for a free one-to-many marketing channel. Now let's talk about things that we pay for. Okay, I know I'm covering a lot of time here. That's why we were, or a lot of, uh, a lot of topics here. That's why we re record these. And today it's a list. So I know it's overwhelming. Just give this an overview, watch it back again and pick a couple of things you're gonna focus on. But here's some paid marketing channels, bulk email. I use MailChimp, there's constant contact. Uh, there's another one my buddy Matt Nelson uses. Anyway, pick one and use it. Initially, they're free. That's how MailChimp got me. They were free up to X number of contacts. I'm like, this is great. And now I've got 25,000 contacts in my MailChimp and I'm paying nearly $200 a month for it. Is it worth it? Please, when I send out my market update videos and I see those hundreds of views from the email I sent out, people thinking of me as it pertains to real estate, totally worth it. Print media and direct mail. Especially now, guys, we, we're not getting out as much. It'd be a great time to consider postcards, just listed, just sold, um, and then other print media too, especially if it's targeted. So I'll give this as an example. Church flyer, the, the weekly flyer, you know, being in that, you know, and then people already kind of know you, like you, trust you because you're in the same church, okay? Just one crazy example there, uh, but the print media can truly be effective. Publications and papers. I'm, I'm not saying run out and place an ad in the plain dealer. I stopped getting the paper years ago. But again, if it's specific and targeted, um, there's a one that's out in middle, middle field that all the Amish read. It's like the word or something like that. It's something uh, that sounds sort of um, religious-y. But if you wanted to target that neighborhood or if that's what you specialized in, you might need to be in that paper or in some other publication. 
you know, um, I got solicited to be in a funeral home uh, brochure. Interesting idea because what's one of the triggers for a transaction in real estate? It's death, right? Your bulk mail, postcards, letters, flyers, uh, signage, you know, just something as simple as your sign is going to attract attention. Uh, one of the tips Tony and I love to give out is when you sell a listing, once your buyer takes ownership of the property, ask them to help you out. Hey, do you mind if I put a sold sign up for a couple of weeks, especially if you're on a busy street, guys? That one right there is gold nugget, totally worth listening to this half hour class. Um, billboards, displays, posters. I mean, I know you're probably saying, Mike, you're nuts. I'm not going to buy a billboard. That's an extreme example. You know, we see our friend Hesh Sagafi and the attorney, uh, Tim Misney, you know, he's everywhere. I'm not saying buy a hundred billboards, but what if you could buy, you know, maybe look at the, the placards at your local grocery store. You see those on the carts or your uh, bus benches, et cetera. You might look into the cost of some of these because it might not be as much as you think, especially now during COVID. Last thing, your swag, your apparel. Pretty low cost item that can strike up a conversation. I'm waiting in line at the grocery store. Someone sees my Century 21 shirt. You never know what happens. I've actually met people that way. Um, I was at a car dealership selling a car and because of my swag, we got on the topic of real estate and I ended up getting two transactions just from that conversation at the car dealership. Um, yard signs and riders I mentioned above. TV and radio. I've got a buddy in El Paso that advertises on TV and radio quite a bit. Now this is kind of the higher cost stuff, uh, but it's still worth considering. Um, I'm actually, I actually participate in a podcast, you know, so lower cost to be able to advertise on that podcast but it's still a great method of reaching a lot of people. Okay, some other paid ways of marketing. And I see I'm running short on time, so I'm gonna buzz right through these. Facebook and Instagram ads. There's paid ads that you can target people. You can pay for ads on YouTube where people can see your video clip or see your ad in line. You've all seen those, right? Nextdoor.com has a paid advertising platform. LinkedIn. So while there's a free way to do it, there's also a paid way. You can advertise and target people on LinkedIn. You can also advertise on the search engines. You can place Google ads, for example. Um, uh, the search ads in YouTube, that's a different sort of advertising platform. There's also display ads. Google Display Network is another one. And then there's, of course, the uh, Facebook ads that target a lot of people where you see on the side of the column, you know, that's actually like a paid advertisement there. I saw one today, I clicked on something, next thing you know, I see an ad for it. And then I mentioned podcasts. You could either do podcasts or you could participate in podcasts. And then of course your website, you know, building your brand through being out there. Google loves certain things. Google loves video. Google owns YouTube. Creating YouTube videos will boost your presence on your website. And then two more things, blogging and blogging, your video blog, okay? So just creating a blog, this is, this is something that could be free. You know, if, you, if you're paying for a website, adding a blog or, or a blog on your website is already included in most websites. So yes, you got to pay for the website, but it's a feature that could get you more attention. And depending on what you're blogging about, you can become the area expert or the expert in this particular type of property. Agent directories and reviews. I don't know how many people say, Mike, I read your reviews on Zillow, for example. And here's a quick list of all the places you need to be with your photo, with a quick about, and then get reviews in as many places as you can. All right, I know I buzzed through that last section pretty quickly, but here's your homework. I want you to choose one to three marketing channels that you're really gonna focus on in 2021 and start learning about those. You know, again, you can hit me up if you want to know more. Um, if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, by the way, check out our other videos. And if this was useful, consider subscribing to us on YouTube. Um, but pick these couple channels, work on them, incorporate them into your plan for 2021. And of course, you can stay tuned to our trainings because we're going to delve into each one of these at some point throughout the year and focus and really talk about scripts. Like if you're going to knock on doors, what do you say? But obviously we didn't have enough time for that today. I'm gonna to stop my share real quick and just tell everyone, thanks for joining us. Have a great rest of your week. And if you need anything, you can always hit me up, Mike at 21mike.com. Take care, everybody.